Hello, I'm Robert, and I write articles about science and astronomy and things like that. And amongst them, I've, I recently wrote some articles about asteroid impacts. And since then, I've been getting lots of worried emails and messages about people who are so scared about this Nibiru thing. And so I just want to try and explain a couple of simple ideas to explain why this idea of Nibiru, if it's got you worried, why it is just complete nonsense. You can easily see for yourself, it's very basic, simple ideas that you can see for yourself, that it is just nonsense. And you can only be worried about it if you can continue to keep changing of the subject. And the people who are really scared about it, they just that email me, they keep changing the subject and they never settle down on one idea. If you look at just one of their ideas, then you soon find that it's nonsense. So uh, the one I'm going to explain now, and this is the simplest one to see as nonsense, they say that Nibiru is a planet with a 3,600 year orbit, which is currently hiding behind the sun. And it's been hiding behind the sun for some time, at least since it was beyond Pluto. They say it was beyond Pluto and it's come in around the sun and it's hiding behind the sun all the time, and, but it's in a 3,600 year orbit. And uh, it, it, to get from Pluto to um, the sun, it has to have taken at least 10 years to get here. And they've also been talking about Nibiru since 2003. So they think it's been hiding behind the sun for at least 10 years anyway, for that reason also. So I want to explain why it's impossible for a planet with a 3,600 year orbit to hide behind the sun from the point of view of another planet with a one year orbit. It's really, really simple stuff. It's not complicated and it should be easy for you to see. So if you can't see it, let me just show you. So, this, this lemon represents the sun, this apple represents Nibiru and this orange represents Earth. And Earth goes around the sun once every year, so in 10 years it's gone around the sun 10 times. Nibiru, they say, has started, okay, started way beyond, be, uh, way beyond Pluto. It doesn't make any difference how far away it is. But they say, say it has stayed opposite the sun. So as you move this around, try moving the orange around the 11 representing the sun and try keeping the apple representing Nibiru exactly opposite the orange. And you will see that the apple has to go around the sun exactly the same number of times that the orange does. It's the only way it can stay opposite the sun. I mean, it's really easy to see this. And if you can't understand it geometrically, just get an apple and orange for yourself and, and try that out. I think just about anyone can see that. And it doesn't matter how far away it is, it's still going to have to go around the sun once a year, so it can't be in a 3,600 year orbit. So these two things, these ideas, just simply don't fit together. You don't even need to know Kepler's laws of orbits, you don't need to know how the orbital period depends on the distance from the sun, or anything like that. You just need very, very simple geometry. So if anyone says that, said that Nibiru is hiding behind the sun, it's just nonsense. It, sh it immediately, completely destroys their credentials as someone who knows anything about astronomy. i just like to do one other thing, because once I've explained this to people, they tend to go to the next step and they say, ah, but, okay, maybe it's not hiding behind the sun, but it's just hide very close to the sun. It's going round and round and round the sun, very, very close, much closer than even than Mercury, and then it's going to suddenly hit the Earth. Well, the, um, so uh, if, if, it was as, if there was a planet as close to the sun as that, then it's in orbits repeat. And there's, unless it's got some kind of motor to suddenly kick it out of its orbit, then there's no way that it can change from doing that to suddenly hitting the Earth. And uh, Mercury is, would be much further away from the sun than it is. And Mercury doesn't suddenly pop out of its orbit, so why would Mer Nibiru if it's been doing that? And we'd have to, this, this, for this we need, do need to understand that the orbital period depends on the distance from the Sun. So if it is close to the Sun, then it goes around the Sun more quickly. And so it has to go around the Sun many times a year if it is if it's closer than Mercury. And in any case, we know that there's no planet in there. There have been long, many searches to see if there's a planet inside of Mercury, and there isn't one. We'd, we'd be able to see it in the SOHO searches, we'd be able to see it crossing in front of the sun as a black dot, we'd also be able to see its gravitational effects. There are many different ways that we can tell for sure that there's no planet there. 
There could be very, very tiny things about 10 kilometers across or so, maybe up to 40 kilometers across inside of Mercury. We have searched for those, we haven't found those either. But it's possible there are very, very tiny things in there. But it's the same for them as well. They'd just be going round and round and round, very close to the Sun, and they're, not, they're of no danger to the Earth either, even if there are any things in there. If you want to find out more about all this, do go and have a read of my article, Imaginary uh, Bullshit Nibiru, which I know it sounds, it, I've been told since I wrote the article, that that is quite a bad swear word in some parts of the States. But here in the UK, it's a very, it's, it's, it's barely a swear word at all. It's a very ordinary word that's used often on television and things like that. So apologise, apologies for those with sensitivities who are from the States. And uh, it's, it's a very ordinary word in, in, in the UK. And I'm quoting from Brian Cox, who is a UK uh, astronomer, who has said that Nibiru, yes, I was just quoting what he said about Nibiru. Many people say it, it's nonsense. Uh, okay, so that's it. Any questions? So, if you've got any questions about all this, do say in the comments. And I hope you enjoyed this, and I hope this at least helps some of you be a little bit less scared about Nibiru. Uh, thanks very much. <laughs>